Hello and welcome to Dice Demons, I'm Emma and in this video I'm going to show you how I paint the new Screamer Killer for the Turnits from the Leviathan box set that uh, Games Workshop kindly sent to me so that I could try painting and building all these models. So I start off with a model that's been primed using the White Scars Primer and then I just go to town as you can see with a very big brush uh, painting the entire thing with the Croxagor Scales Contrast Paint because I'm going to try to paint this in sort of a slap chop ish method. My idea is that I want a color scheme that I like the look of but at the same time also a color scheme that I can see myself painting over an entire army and doing it relatively quickly so that I'll hopefully have a Tyranids army that I can play with while we are actually still in 10th edition and not uh, you know first when we get to like 11th or 14th or something. So uh, after the contrast paint is dry, I go back over it using a dry brush with just some white paint on it. Um, I do it over a couple of rounds because I want it to be relatively light because I want the uh, first real layer of paint to be very bright when I put that on because I think, I'm thinking this is a space box and I want the space box to be like really shiny, toxic, bright. And uh, so that's why I'm uh, spending quite a bit of time getting the dry brush really light. Then I pick up another contrast paint and this one is Striking Scorpion Green, um, one of the newer contrast paints. And it's the the brightest, I think, contrast paint, uh, this green contrast paint there is. And um, I just really, really like it. I, um, I initially thought that I would uh, perhaps go with a darker uh, green first and then do like layers of highlight, but then I just decided, well, you know what, I want the brightest green I can get, so I went for start Striking Scorpion Green as the base color. Then to get an orange to match, I pick up another contrast paint, and this one is Magma Droth Flame, which is also a very bright, uh, white, vibrant um, orange. I thought, I mean, this is going to be a crazy color scheme anyway, so why not just, you know, pick the brightest, most fun colors I have and see where that takes me. Of course, uh, almost no color scheme for me is complete without just a touch of Athematic Blue, one of my favorite paints. It's uh, also a contrast paint, it's a, a nice um, lighter turquoise color and I just really really like it and I thought that would tie in sort of the orange and green parts a little bit. I don't know why because obviously blue is a contrasting color to orange as well so I, I don't know. Um, perhaps it was just, you know, sort of an excuse to put it somewhere and, and just yeah, I just like that color a lot. Then I took another contrast paint and this one is called Doomfire Magenta and it's uh, also quite a nice uh, sort of vivid uh, pink color that I haven't used a lot in, uh, in my painting projects yet but uh, I thought this was a nice excuse to use that as well. Then for the edge of the arm, I think it's called like the talon or something. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, English is not my first language. Uh, I um, decided to go with the Lockshan Purple, which is uh, also one of the new contrast paints. And it's it's actually a really nice purple color. It looks a little bit more purple in real life than it does here on camera. It somehow just shows up a little bit more blue. I like the Lockshan Purple, but in the end I decided it didn't, didn't really work. I wanted something a bit darker in tone, so I went back over it with a Vallejo color. And this one is called Midnight Purple, and I think that worked uh, way better. Then for the first layer of highlights, I used a paint called Quantum Green, which is from Huge Miniatures. It's one of their fluorescent paints. And I have mixed in a little bit of painting medium just to get it to flow a little bit. But I don't try to be as smooth as you might possibly get, just because, as I said, this is going to be something that I'm painting for a tabletop quality. I want it to be something that I can do over an entire army relatively quickly. Then I grab a metal sculpting tool and I use that to make tiny dots, still using the Quantum Green. And I do that both because I think it looks cool and to add some visual interest and also, to be honest, to hide that some of the transitions on the paints are just not very smooth at all. Uh, I also take uh, a lighter yellow color. This one is called Starfire Yellow, also from Huge Miniatures. And I do the same there because I think it, uh, yeah, I think it looks cool and I wanted this uh, green yellowish color to be as bright as I could get it. I then take the Starfire Yellow and I also do some edge highlights as you can see here. Again, this could be done a lot smoother if you wanted it to, but at the same time, this is for a tabletop and I wanted something that did not take forever. 
So yeah, um, sometimes you have to sacrifice a little bit of quality for a little bit of speed and find a nice sort of uh, in-between place where you're happy. Then I grabbed some Achillean Green Contrast Paint and you can't really see it here, but I used that to darken up a little bit of the talon, the edge of the talon. And I also used that to do a dark outline around each of the scales here, each of the orange scales, and also to draw in some of the grooves in the, in, in the scales as well. And I added a little bit as well, just because I think, I mean, a little bit of texture never hurt anybody. And I think texture looks great on a model, particularly a model uh, like this, where you have some relatively large surfaces to work on. Then for the first layer of highlights, I am using a Vallejo color, and this one is called Orange Fire. And uh, it's actually a quite nice, pretty bright color for a sort of non-fluorescent paint uh, that I thought worked really well and was uh, quite enjoyable to work with. It's a new paint. I haven't really used a lot of Vallejo colors before, but I find that they're quite easy to work with. So, uh, so yeah, that's uh, that. It's always nice to get you know to get to know new paints and try new stuff out. Then for the second layer of highlights, I am back to using huge miniatures paints, and this one is called Laser Orange, and it's uh, quite a bright orange color and uh, it doesn't really show up that well on video but you can see it when uh, you get, a, got, get to see a photo of the finished piece there you can see how bright it really actually is. Then because I really like the effect on the green part of the leg I again took my metal sculpting tool and I just did some tiny quick dots using, uh, using the laser orange again and once I was happy with that, I thought it would be it would be quite cool eh, to just get a sort of second layer of highlights using the um, the Starfire Yellow, the same as I used for the brightest highlights on the green part. Um, I kind of tell myself this is something I do to tie those two colors together, but the truth is I just really like very bright neon yellow. And so if I get a chance to put it somewhere, I probably will. So yeah, there you have it. Then for the first layer of highlights on the talon, I mixed up the uh, original uh, base color, the Vallejo Midnight Purple with another Vallejo color. And this one is called Alien Purple. And I mixed these two because I thought the Alien Purple would be too uh, light on its own. And so I thought this was uh, an, a nice first layer of highlights as I wanted this uh, the talon to be relatively dark for the most part and then only just have really bright highlights at the very edge of the talon. The next layer of highlight was painted with another paint from Huge Miniatures and this one is called Ultraviolet. And again, you could do this much more smoothly with much smoother transitions between the colors, but I decided to go again a little bit for a speed over quality, just a tiny bit. Then the third layer of highlights was another Huge Miniatures paint and this one is called Pulse Wave Pink. And then uh, the last pink layer of highlight here is another huge miniatures paint and this one is called Cyber Pink. And lastly, I just touched the very tip of the talon with a bit of white and I am using the Army Painters Matte White. Then I thought it would be fun to add a little bit more visual interest and some contrasting colors to the talon and so I took a paint from Vallejo and this one is called Aquamarine and again used the metal sculpting tool to do that. I'm kind of lying now. I had bought this color and I thought it looked so cool and so fun and I really wanted to use it for something on something. So um, I just had to incorporate it into this project and uh, and that's why that's why you can see it here. I, I still think it looks good. I'm happy with the choice, but still um, it, it was more of me wanting to try a new cool color out uh, than a sort of very conscious color scheme planning thing. Then the pink parts here are highlighted in the exact same way, the uh, edge of the talon with the first the pulse wave pink, the cyber pink, and then a touch of white at the end. Just the same colors. Again, it ties the whole thing together and those are my favorite pink colors. So there you go. Then for the uh, light turquoise parts, I just use a bit of a uh, thin down white paint, again, the Army Painters Matte White, to highlight these. And you could do this over, you know, using a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of layers to get the highlights really smooth. But I have chosen not to do that. And I actually think it looks 
it looks completely fine. Uh, and again, on a whole army, it'll look, no one will notice if the transitions aren't quite smooth. I then decided I wanted a darker outline around some of the details and for that I used a Keelan Green also contrast paint and I actually quite like that look so I thinned it down a little bit and I used that just to add a little bit of shadows to the uh, to the green. I thought it made perhaps um, the brighter parts of the green stand out even even more than they already did. Then I'm quickly going to show you how I did the base and you can just skip this if you're not interested. Uh, but I took some blue foam, some XPS foam, and I painted in some sort of stones. I wanted the base to be look like natural looking because I think these are space bucks. They don't have to be in a factory setting or anything. They can just be out in the wild. Then I took a rock to just press in some textures on these, uh, on these foam rocks before I cut them out. I like doing this. I think it's fun. Um, it's like playing. Uh, and I also decided I wanted a sort of small stone tower on top of the base just because it would uh, add a little bit more visual interest and not make the model look quite as sort of alone on just a completely flat surface. So that's why I decided just to build a tiny little rock tower out of XPS foam, which was actually quite fun. I really enjoy building with XPS foam. It's uh, yeah, it's just fun and liberating. And here you can see uh, the base as it looked and I painted it up using a bit of black paint and mixed in with a bit of PVA glue just to give it a little bit more, uh, both a little bit of color of course, and also to give it a little bit more durability with, the, uh, with a bit of the glue mixed in. Once that was completely dry, I took some Administratum Grey, one of the paints from uh, Citadel, and I painted each uh, rock more or less individually. You don't have to be very precise with stuff like this because this is going on a base and no one is going to check the tiniest, teeniest, tiniest details, so it doesn't really matter much. But I sort of painted them individual. Now I had taken the time to carve them out individually. I wanted to make sure you could still see they were individual rocks uh, afterwards. Then to get a little bit of color variation, I took some different contrast paints. Uh, first I took uh, Black Legion, then I took Wildwood, and I took some Croxigore scales. I then decided that that was a little bit too bright, so I mixed in a bit of the brown and black uh, into that, uh, again, just to tone it down a little bit. Then I took some uh, Griff Charger Grey, um, and then after that I got out my Achillean Green. I really like my Achillean Green. And then lastly, some Warp Lightning uh, Green to finish the whole piece off. And I know it looks a little bit weird. It looks like uh, it has some very uh, bright colored uh, chicken pox, but I think uh, oftentimes a uh, real rock has all sorts of different color variations. And so if you just paint something uniformly gray, it tends to look a little bit boring and a little bit unnatural to my eyes at least. It's something I believe I learned from Black Magic Craft, uh, which is a really cool crafting YouTube channel. So if you don't know him, you should definitely check him out. I then just dry brushed it using the Administratum Grey and also uh, the Administratum Grey mixed in with a little bit of white. I then thought it would be really cool with some tufts, some neon colored tufts. And um, I believe these are from Green Stuff World, if I'm not mistaken. They at least have some very bright neon colored uh, tufts uh, and you can also check out gamers grass they also have some very very cool uh, fluorescent almost uh, tufts and here you can see the finished piece you'll notice that i ended up switching out the orange tufts for some that were blue i just thought they uh, they actually fit in a little bit better the orange ended up looking a little bit out of place but yeah uh, i still think it was uh, a cool idea but uh, just not for this model I'm actually quite pleased with this. I think it looks uh, really busy and uh, it's sort of way over the top uh, in everything. It's just, there, there is just too much going on for this to be a beautiful model or anything. But I think for a toxic space bug, this, uh, well, 
I think this actually works really well. And I think it was fun to paint. And it's also a color scheme that is relatively easy to do. I don't think this, uh, this is a big model. It's a really big model. And it didn't take me nearly as long time to paint as other models of this size have taken in the past. So uh, while this is not something that you can do uh, in an hour or two, it's definitely something you can achieve uh, fairly quickly. And I can see myself doing that over an entire army. Um, and I really want a big Tyranids army. I like my Horde armies. It would just be so much fun. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank my Patreons who are helping support this channel. I'm really, really very grateful. So thank you to Thomas Masson, to Gwenael, to Andre Correa, Anthony Paul Castro, TJ Kubiak, Mando Project, Starcon85, Espear and Echinococcus. So thank you everyone. I yeah, I really appreciate it. And if you would like to join these wonderful people in supporting the channel, you can find a link in the show notes below. I also have a link to a uh, huge miniatures where you can buy uh, well all of their paints, of course, but also especially perhaps uh, their uh, fluorescent paints. I have a, an affiliate link where you can save 5% on that and also help support this channel while you are busy buying paints. So uh, if you'd like to check that out as well, I'll have a link to that also in the show notes. So thank you so much for watching and remember if you want to stay up to date on my painting projects you can also follow me as Dyson Demons over on Twitter and Instagram. If you like this video I of course always appreciate a like, a comment and a, a subscription to the channel as well. So thank you so much guys and I'll see you next time. Bye!